So notice the contact with your feet in the ground. Sink the hips and lengthen through the spine. Just take some time to really tune in to the ground. So notice that contact and then lengthen up through the Bahue point, the crown of the head. Sink the shoulders and sink the hips. Take a few slow, deep breaths. So relax around the jaw, relax the neck and around the face, and then relax down the shoulders all the way down the arms, down both shoulders, relax the front of your body, and then relax your back. So from the top, right down to the lower back, and then finally, just letting go in the muscles of your legs. So you gently draw the toes in. Sink the hips. Just gently breathe in and breathe out. Turn the waist, just let the arms flop round. So you just want to focus on really letting go in your shoulders. While you're turning your waist and allowing the arms to really let go, sink down with the sitting bones, the tailbone, feel your weight sinking. Notice the breath as it goes in. Notice the breath as it comes out. Breathe in and out. Relax around the jaw. Notice the contact with the feet. Breathing, very good.
Okay, relax the shoulders, sink the hips, check your posture. We'll just have a little look at the feet. Just make sure we're waking up the sensory receptors in the foot and just allow your weight to settle behind the ball of each foot. So in that bubbling well point or your entron, and we just gently transfer the weight and transfer the weight. So we're relaxing around the hips, relaxing in the ankles and the knees. We're lengthening through the spine, sinking the shoulders, sinking the hips. Notice the contact. Relax the shoulders. Breathing nice and tall through the body. Relaxed when you're moving. Okay, go back to the middle and it's as if you're you're perched on a high stool uh on saturday i was at a day uh workshop and the the teacher was getting us to imagine we had a big thick springy tail that we were perching on which i quite like the uh i quite like that image because uh yeah so perch on your springy tail and you're you're lengthening so there's this soft, springy feeling in the body, your uh, supporting bones in your legs and in your spine, think of them as holding you upright and this upward energy coming through there. Okay, now we'll just go forwards and back. So we're, we're just very gently rocking between the ball of the foot and toes and the heel just show you that from the side so i'm softly gazing forwards i'm listening behind and above my ankles are soft i'm sinking down with my sitting bones gently breathing in and out Relax in the knees as well, if you can. And then round and round in a circle. And just keep everything nicely sunk, lengthening, calm and relaxed.
and in the other direction. So a bit of space, the shoulders, space in the hips, knees, ankles, elbows, wrists, hands. Good contact with the ground. And then figure eight. Nice and relaxed in the body. A smooth, easy feeling. Gently breathing in and out. And then the other direction. Sink the hips. Notice your feet. Take a slow, slow gentle, gentle bounce. You want to let go in the lower back and then we'll do this one so that you drop and then the arms fall up and then you drop the arms, let go and then come back up again. So it's the momentum generated through the legs that causes the arms to move. And then turn around the elbow so that the palms are up and then there's this nice stretching sensation across the chest. Again, we're nice and tall, nice and relaxed. Use your springs, show you that from the back. So I'm feeling this long feeling along the spine. And then change, loosening exercise number one. Keep breathing. Relax the shoulders. Sink the hips. Relax the palms of the hands. Natural movements. One more each side. 
and check your posture. So just take some time to adjust the feet. Take your time to sink your hips, sink the shoulders. And then that one. And check your posture again. Really let go in the shoulders. Swing the arms back and forward. I'll show you that from the side. So I'm, I'm turning my waist. I'm feeling the springiness in my legs. I'm combining my springs with my turning of the waist. And then just allowing my arms to swing back and swing forwards. Let go around the shoulder joint. Breathing. Okay, relax the shoulders, lengthen through the spine, relax knees and wobbling. into a horse stance it doesn't have to be as big as mine sink the hips knees in line with the toes and just monitor your hip joint and we're just going to transfer our weight transfer the weight tall through the body Relax in the lower back. Okay, back in the middle and now circle, horizontal circle. So you're going heel, ball of the foot, ball of the foot, heel. Heel, ball of the foot, ball of the foot, heel.
and then round in the other direction. And then vertical circle, everyone's favorite. We won't do too many of these. And then the other direction. And then bring the feet in, have a little shake out. Um, you may need to use a wall for this next exercise. So you want the, the side you're using the wall on, you want the leg to, that you're moving to be on the outside. So like this, or if you want to do the other leg, you use this wall. So the leg is on the outside that you're you're doing the exercises with and the leg that you're balancing through that's on the inside and that's closest to the wall okay so transfer your weight go into cat stance and then raise the knee and then hold the hands out one two three four five six seven eight bring the hands down and then forwards and back one i'll show you from the side one two three four five six seven eight foot one two three four five six seven eight other way one two three four five six seven eight and then round and round with the lower limb one two three four five six seven eight other way one two three four five six seven eight and then shake out both legs your legs will wiggle and a bit of a bounce and then we do that on the other side i will use the wall so I actually I will show it from the diagonal view because my jeans are quite it's hard to see what my legs are doing. So you lift up and then you go one. Oh, hang on a minute. Start again. We do 10. We hold for eight first. Yeah, let's get this right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Bring the hands down. Then one, two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight other way one two three four five six seven eight circles one two three four five six seven eight and one two three four five six seven eight shake out okay and then just circle the so you're getting the hip joint to move three four five six and then the other other side one two three four five six inside one two three four five six inside one two three four five six 
Okay, I think that's warmed up our body. So just stay in your Wu Chi. Breathe in and out. Tall through the spine. And begin. One more time. This one. One more time each side. Is that the arms relaxed? Check your posture. Like this. This way a bit. Bring the hand to the cheek. And then this hand turns over and this hand comes down. And I'll show you from the side, it sort of goes to here. So it goes one, two, three. One, it's another variation on rolling arms. Two, three, it's a version I learnt from Evoca Scuba. One, two, three. Keep the arms soft and relaxed. We'll do one more time with each 
side. Check the posture. Bring one hand on top, one hand underneath. We're just going to turn, open, come back, cross the hands. But this time the hands swap round. So the hand that was underneath is now on the top. And we turn the waist very slowly and, and not too much. And then we turn the waist a little way to get that opening and then turn the waist. So I'm just going to turn into the corner, turn into the corner, and turn into the corner. Open, feel that opening, feel the closing. Sink the hips. Softening the knees. Breathing gently and naturally. One more each side. Okay, let's have a look at coiling silk. So We'll just do one side at a time and then we'll combine the sides. So actually I will show that from the diagonal view. So that the hand, so you've got your hip here and the hand comes round the hip and you want to loosen in the wrist and you're, you're using your, you're using your body, but the body's kind of moving the body movement is actually being directed by what's happening in the wrist and in the arm. I've got another one of those movements that I learned on Saturday to show you. But this is quite a tricky movement. Um, it is shown in great detail in Grandmaster Chen Xiao Wang's uh, videos on YouTube. Highly recommended. Okay, let that relax. Check both sides. Check that you're correctly lined up and then do the other side. So we're just doing this, this one, coiling silk. Okay, and then the opposite way, that, that's a bit trickier, but there's still some body movements happening. 
but focus on the arm first and then the body just does what it does. Breathing, keep your breathing natural, steady, calm. Okay, let that relax a bit more. And again, you're tuning into your springs. You've got your springy tail, you've got your head floating up. You've got lots of room in the body. So lots of, lots of space. And then we'll try the, the other way with the other hand. I, I find one way go, easy going and doing it in the other direction for some reason. This movement, you just basically have to keep doing it over and over and over again until you can actually do it. There's no shortcuts, unfortunately. It's not like a light bulb moment. It's more like a sort of long distance running kind of thing. You just have to keep going and shake out. OK, try this. So it goes one two three one two three i'll come a bit closer so i turn and then this is like a coiled spring i just release the spring and then my arm so i'm feeling the movement in all my joints along the arm so this is brand new. It's a good one for the shoulder joint. And then once you've got the arm, then you start moving your body or you allow your body to move. and shake out try the other side so start just with the arm and then once you've got the arm movement familiar then just allow your body to move So it's like you're winding a spring up and then just letting it go. And then you can, if you want. But that might be a little bit one step too far. <laughs> well, well, yeah. So just right, forget, forget it happened. Very good. OK, we'll let that cook. So a horse stance, but not too enthusiastic. You don't you know, you don't need to go all the way there. Just take it easy. We'll go and look at silt reeling one and two. So we transfer the weight. We turn. Keeping upright. We transfer the weight. We turn. Nice and relaxed. Very soft and floppy in the arms and light. Imagine your arms are just floating. You've got this very solid feeling in the legs, strong in the legs, flexible in the waist, light in the arms. Softly gazing forwards, listening behind and listening above. Breathing.
Nice. Okay, let that one relax. So get, get the arm nice and relaxed and then just place your other hand um, on the top of your quads. So you can monitor that hip and then we're gonna do it on the other side. Relax the shoulders, sink the hips. Have a little shake out and we'll have a look at silk wheeling number two so make a, a rounded um, and comfortable feeling in the body and that you've got lots of room lots of space so we go one two so you want to keep this shoulder open keep the shoulder joint with this open feeling I'm feeling the sensation right to the fingertips. I'm nice and relaxed, nice and comfortable. other side. Relax both shoulders, sink the hips, transfer the weight, turn the waist, transfer the weight, turn the waist, transfer the weight, turn the waist. Breathing in and out. Combine them. Sink the hips. Keep breathing one more time and change. Yep. 
Use your eyes to scan across the room from corner to corner. Soft focus gaze. Last one. And then shake your legs out. Okay, three circles. Before that, quick water break. Cool down for a bit. So demonstration. Start here. I go one. Two, three. So both arms are moving, but one arm's moving a little faster than the other, I guess. These, they're, they're together. Now, when you get here, this arm that I'm wiggling fingers off, that's still moving very slowly. And then they move together again. So um, the other thing that's happening is if you have a look at the waist, I'm turning my waist uh, to, uh, if I just show you, that's where I'm turning my waist to, to the corners, to the corners. So I turn that way, that way, that way, then that way, that way, then that way. Excellent, okay. Small circle, bigger circle, small circle, small circle. So turn, 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 turn. There's a lot of turning. There's a lot happening in the middle. Three circles. Nice and relaxed. So you can feel that the body is connected. So cross the hands. So you go one way, you go the other way. This hand comes down, hand lifts off the other. Small circle at the end. So both arms are in constant motion. Relax the shoulders more. Keep the breathing natural, soft. Sink the hips. Tall through the spine. We'll do one more of these each side. So one more after this. Little shake out. Okay, so next one we'll do is middle winding, and then we'll have a little look at the the long form. Um, on Wednesday, I did the whole of the the long form, the Chen long form, in this tiny little room. <laughs> it was very strange, but we managed it, and um, 
it, it really got me thinking that, you know, it is quite nice to have a big field to do your Tai Chi in. Um, but actually, you can do a lot in whatever space you've got. You can still do your Tai Chi. Even if um, I, I found out one of my mentors um, that I've met um, in a Tai Chi event I, I usually go to each year, um, a Tai Chi instructor, he was he was at a protest. This is this is in the 80s, I think, or 70s. And uh, he'd got himself arrested and was in a cell. And then because he was so bored, he'd been there for hours and hours, he did his Tai Chi form, <laughs> even though there was a lot less room. And he said he felt great by the end of it. He just practiced Tai Chi in his, in his holding cell. And uh, he felt very, very good. And normally the form that he does, it requires at least sort of double, double the length, at least of this room. But he probably had about half um, half the size of the room, still managed to do a whole Tai Chi form, uh, which I think is quite impressive. So anyway, let's have a look at middle winding. So we start here, we go one, two, three. This is my version, the Corel's version of middle winding. <laughs> oh, we'll check it. So there's this stretch and then it kind of releases and then has an extra bounce. So stretch, release, and then an extra bounce. That's the best I can do, unfortunately. And oh, very light arms as well. Very light arms and solid, strong legs. Solid and strong legs. And we're looking forwards listening behind and above so there's still this you want to maintain the structural integrity in your body and not just the structural integrity you want to maintain the sense of connectivity through the body so that everything's connected and engaged yeah there you go sorted never you all look very good this is no this is nice if we were all in our suits and uh, had the Chinese music going. This is display team material. One more each side. Okay. Right. Let's have a look at the, just move this out of the way. I'll have to do it facing the way you're all facing. Um, yeah, mirroring. It's too tricky. <laughs> My brain doesn't work that way. So I can do, I can do it like this. So we'll start over here. So you've got your feet together and then you're nice and tall. And then you step out with your left foot and then you wait. Uh, then normally when you're doing this with Mark, Grandmaster Chen Chao Wang, he'll have you waiting there for at least 10 minutes while he gets everyone in the right position and checks your posture and adjusts things. 
you just wait. So you just want to wait and you want to sink down and lengthen up through the spine and relax the shoulders. I'll show the first bit from the front and then I'll turn around so I'm in the same direction. So you just breathe in, breathe out, and then begin on the in-breath. So you breathe in and the arms float up and then the arms go down. And then you go to your, so go to that side first. Then you go to the other side. Now you turn on the heel, put the toes down. Now you step forward with your left leg and have the toes up. Now when the hands go behind, that's where your toes go down. Transfer the weight forwards, open, come underneath. And the hands are like this. I'll show you from the side. Then you bring the hand, the fist on the open palm. Then you raise your right leg, raise the right leg, bring the left hand down a little, and then go into Wu Chi and stamp. So like that. Brilliant. Okay, then we turn, turn open. Then the right hand is underneath the left. So you cross the hands, right hand underneath the left, step out with your right foot into horse stance. Turn to your left, put your hand on your hip, raise the right hand, bring the right hand across, push. Bring the left hand to the right hand, transfer your weight. Transfer your weight into the left foot. Pick up your shot put. Cat stance facing this wall, but your knee of the other leg is facing that corner. Sink down and push. Make a fist with your right hand. Bring the left hand over like this. Then imagine you're hitting a ball off the palm of your hand with your right fist. Left hand underneath the right elbow. Step with your left foot. Push forward with your left hand to the corner. Sink the hip. Right, we'll do that two more times. So again, start with your feet closed and nice and tall through the spine. Breathe in and out. Step out. Breathe in and begin. It's called opening. And then this whole move is called Guardian Warrior Pounds the Mortar. So you step, bring the hands back as you put your foot down, put the toes down. Open. Close. I'll show you that from the side. Turn, turn, cross the hands, step. Stretch, release. Pick up your shot put. It's called four, um, six ceiling and four closing. And then into single whip. Single whip, it's called. 
So from the other side, the other side, it looks like that single whip. So you've got your weight maybe a little more on that, that hand, um, foot. And then this hand, it's like a, a very hollow fist. You like that. Okay. Okay, we've got room for one more. Let's do, let's go from the beginning to there again. Just to, and then we'll, we'll um, keep, keep doing that maybe for the next week or so and then, and then carry on. Nice and tall. Get your alignment first, sink the hips. Opening. Breathe in and out. And then begin on the next in breath. Raise the hands. Sink down. So lazily tying coat, lazily tying coat. Six sealing and four closings. Um, great. So we'll, we'll keep persevering with that. Okay, just sink your hips, feel the knees nice and relaxed, lengthen through the spine and breathe in. Breathe out. Relax the shoulders, sink the hips, and then breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, and out. One more of these. And sink the hips. And then we'll see if it works today. Rub the hands together. And polishing the face. And rub the hands together again and give your lower back a rub. And then just stand for a moment. Just really feel the ground under your feet. Feel that you're nicely aligned 
from the feet all the way to the crown of the head. The arms are nice and relaxed. Got this good solid connection through the legs. You feel comfortable and you're owning your space. Make a fist with the right hand, left hand over the top, feet together, and bow. Good. Okay, so those of you that are going, well done. Uh, those of you that are staying, we'll do some each one now. Um, we'll, we'll carry on with this, this thing, and then do um, have a look at some of the some of the movement exercises. Maybe go on to some standing. Uh, so I, I did have the this one, this punch in. Corel showed me how to do that, so we can add that one in as well. Um, yeah, cool. So just to go back to this, um, this exercise. So eventually, what happens is you kind of you can you can you sort of fold here so you you come that side and then you fold and then eventually it's a it's a directional change if you if you want to change direction but we'll we'll um just get the arm movement first because it, it it's quite sort of systematic so i'm just i'm just going to do this one So you want to really let go in that shoulder and also keep the keep the sensation of awareness right to the fingers. Like, like your fingers almost are, are buzzing a bit and there's this real liveliness in the, um, you see it in, um, I, I was watching a, uh, one of my next door neighbours, we, we were watching a um, sci-fi thing. And I was noticing with a because there there's some you know trained actors on this thing, and when they were they were making their gestures, and and there was right you could you could see the you could see the energy right to the ends of the fingertips. So I was I was wondering if one of them was either a singer or had done some qigong or something because it was very very noticeable when they they're using their hands rather than sort of all limp and uh, not there. It was very, very present. So you want to work on your, you know, not, not, not overdo it, but you want to work on your presence. So we just get nice and oh, first, and we'll just do one arm for a bit. So, so I'm doing the, I'm doing the turn straight away, but you can actually just do the arm movement because it's the arm that's directing in a way what your body's doing. And then once you've got the arm sorted out, you just relax it as much as possible. This is basically my homework till November. <laughs> oh. It's quite, it's, um, this movement you see in um, snake snake dips down from the twenty fourth step. You, uh, <laughs> but we'll just it kind of almost massages your lower back in your body. Okay, try try the other side. So just the arm first, and then once you got the arm moving. So it's like a spring kind of coiling and then letting the spring go. The spring kind of unwinds itself when you take the pressure off it. So 
So just keep everything relaxed. It's just very natural. And you'll notice one side feels different than the other. So try a few. One, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four. So that, that's probably a bit too much. You just do it one at a time. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll keep plugging away with that. Just let that relax now. Okay, now for something completely different. Go into your cat stance and we're going 70, 30 to 50, 50 without moving the knee forward. And you're also softly gazing forwards and you're listening behind and above. So we'll do lifting water. And then you come back down. We'll show you that from the front. Tall through the spine. Relax the wrists, relax the elbows. Lengthen through the spine. And then try that on the other side. So usually uh, what you do is you do one side as long as you want and then you change sides rather than like a prescriptive number. So you sink down, the hands come out to the side, and then as you come up, the palms come up. Softly focus your gaze so that it is relaxed and alert as you listen behind and above. Relax around the elbows as well. So, so you're lifting water. And as you lift the water, imagine a beautiful sunny day. And the water just trickles down your arm, drops off the elbows, drops off your fingertips. And you can see the sun glistening through the water. So it's this very soft, relaxed feel. Okay. Right. Next, we'll do ping tray like this, and then you come forwards, come back. So it's like you slightly pull back with the fingertips, gentle pull back, and you slightly push forward with the heel of the hand. But that's too much now, so you almost hint it. It's almost like homeopathic pushing of the heel and the homeopathic pulling of the fingertips. Show you that from the side. So like this. I'm looking forward, listening behind. Feel that the what's happening in the in the upper spine between the shoulder blades as you're doing this. You feel the closing in the shoulder blades as you come forward. You can feel the opening in the shoulder blades. <clears throat> I 
and then try that the other side. Okay, so um, yeah, let's have a little look at the uh, punching exercises again. So we've got this one where we come like this and we step and we're, we're just gonna do it in slow motion. So we'll just do the first one, one, two, three. So it's like you've got a rubber band between your fists and you stretch the rubber band and then it snaps. Four, five, six, seven, and keep everything relaxed. Eight, nine, and 10. And then we'll try 10 on the other side. So you get your posture first, get your shoulders nice and relaxed, your spine nice and lengthened, Make a gentle fist, one's in front of the head and one's by the side of the head. And then we go one, two. So there's not too much of a three. The arm stays bent, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Nice. So that's the straight punch. Um, and then we'll go, we'll go through the four punches today. So we've got the um, rising punch, the dropping punch, and the round punch going around. So we did all of those um, on Saturday. So I now feel comfortable, especially with that, that one. So the, the second one is the rising punch. So as one hand comes up, the other hand comes down like a counter. Oh, that was it. Um, Carell was saying on, on Saturday that there's a counterbalance with the back of the arm that's in the rear. So whatever the front hand is doing, the back arm is almost doing the opposite. And then that makes a counterbalance. And, and then you're using the whole of your body rather than just randomly sticking your arms out you're actually using the you're using the body in an engaged and connected manner so it was about being engaged it was about doing it doing your counterbalance so when you do the first um the second punch the rising punch and also there's um this thing yeah that was it when we were doing this exercise eventually you you kind of did that it reminded me a bit of when um, you used to have those springy puppet things and you press the bottom of the platform and then it would go all floppy and then you'd let go and it would come back upright again. It's that kind of thing. So you, there's this, this folding. I think we talked about it last week when we were doing this exercise to try and get this folding, a folding and then an opening in that point. Um, I guess that's the, yeah, in this in this point here, kind of fold there and then you stretch there as well. So uh, that's where that comes in, quite useful when you're doing your rising punch. So we go one, two, and it's like you turn a wheel, three, four. So you're not straight up, but you're not straight out. It's like a diagonal, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Right, try that the other side. So get your hands correct, get your feet correct. 
and then going slightly forwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So that was the upward punch. The next one is he just went like this. One. So it's a downward. And as you go down, this sort of raises up. One, two, three. Actually, I'll show that from the side. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Almost like you're tearing a phone directory. Ten. And then the other side. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, the final of the four punches, and again, when you when you practice each one individually, eventually you can then combine the directions and get all sorts of diagonals and things going on. But we're just sticking with the basics for now. So I'm here, and then I go like that. So I kind of turn, so that's the counterbalance. And you can either do it that way, or you can do it that way. Both are fine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten other side, so nice and tall, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, so um, this last punch, the round punch, it's for me, I think, when I was watching Corel doing it, it felt like it was coming from a kind of chain bow perspective. So you're keeping this shape as your, in fact, yeah, let's go into chain bow. And then just make a, just close the hand so you make a fist, but you've still got that same rounded shape. And then transfer the weight, turn and raise the heel. Transfer the weight, turn and raise the heel. And you're almost sort of doing the movement we just did. So just keep the arms where they are and you're turning the waist. I'll show you that from the back. It's like principles of movement, really. Okay, and then we'll do, we'll, we'll come back, we'll do more on the punching next week because uh, we'll build what we've done this week. Uh, but first, yeah, let, let's, let's have a look at the, um, this one again, but without, just in Wu Chi, so rising or lifting water. So the good thing about these, health exercises such as lifting water is you can you can do them as a standing exercise as well Keep breathing, very good. Okay, 
Okay, now this time, just hold there. Breathe in and breathe out. Tall through the spine. This nice open feeling in the body. Natural breathing. And then hold here. Open the palms of the hands, open the fingers, open the wrists, relax the arms, floating arms. And then try it now as a movement, see if that's done. It kind of shows you where the full stops are, I think. Okay, and turn the palms over and pushing a ball in water. So you let the ball float your hands up and then you come down, push the ball in water. So really relax the, the shoulders, sink the hips, sink the hips. Think about your Think about the circle that the arms are making. So this circular movement. Tall, relaxed. Okay, and then again you can hold, you can hold here. Feel that hip sink, knees in line with the toes, and then you can hold here. Grounded feeling in the body. And then when you do it again, it might feel different. Okay. Balancing the three dantians or triple heater exercise. Just breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. And one more round. Okay. 
And then One more time. Nice and tall through the body. Take a few slow, deep breaths. Like a fist with the right hand. Left hand over the top, bring your feet together and bow. 